one man in particular, former Deputy Prime Minister John Anderson, represented a seat called Gwida. It's since been abolished, but Walgett was a key community there, and these are problems he has contended with for much of his political life. Also joining him, Senior Fellow at the Institute of Public Affairs, John Roskin. Gents, I want to talk to you about the war of progressives, but before I do, John Anderson, uh, mugged by reality today that grog is not good in these communities, despite those bans being lifted last year, and uh, over my dead body, basically, says the Chief Minister this morning, and now those bans or restrictions are back and talk of bans being returned. This is just the start of what's needed in Central Australia, isn't it? Well, certainly it is. Um... I don't know quite how to sort of tackle this. I thought it was a very disappointing performance from a very senior figure in the Labor Party because, uh, as you mentioned, she'd been saying no race-based bans. Well, they weren't in the first place. They were regional, as you yourself have just pointed out, uh, in those areas where there are real problems. The same sorts of debit card restrictions and so forth uh, applied regardless of the colour of your skin. The second insight that comes out of that, though, here is a senior Labor person who says, oh, no, we will not have anything addressed in this race-based issue here of a crisis in a community, but it's all right to have race provisions in the federal constitution. I think people ought to be aware of that. I think it's an extraordinary contradiction, and it points to something, which is that if we were to go ahead with the voice as proposed as I understand it to be, and of course, we don't know exactly what it might look like, we're not being given the details. We can't really form a view. But we need to be very mindful that progressives won't take the recommendations of anyone. Why would they take the recommendations of the voice they set up if it collides mm. with their progressive worldview? And nowhere does it collide more than in their refusal to come to grips with the essence of the problem here, which is the dysfunctional environment that these children are being born into, family structures actually matter. And until we can break the cycle and have a generation of young children who grow up in freedom from fear, physical fear, moral fear, whatever it is, you won't break the cycle, but they won't talk about it. It's interesting, John, we're told we need a voice to the parliament of Aboriginal people to solve all of these issues. Uh, yet you hear from people like Marion Scrimshaw, a Labor MP, who says the grog bans should never have gone and need to be brought back, not listened to, not listened to potentially until today. Let's hope they listen to her because this is part of the restrictions coming back. But it's not an issue of Aboriginal voices and a voice. It's the voices that the left are prepared to listen to, Jacinta Price is one of those Aboriginal voices, Warren Mundine too, that I want to hear from. It's the voices that they like to hear from that will be listened to and only those voices. I'm really, since you raise it, increasingly convinced that the problem with the voice will be precisely as you've outlined it. It will only be listened to if it fits the progressive narrative of the day. So what if the voice says, well, our communities are being socialised by the trash end of whitey society, which is what some of my Aboriginal leaders used to say to me. Uh, you know, grog, substance abuse. In those days, vans of video obscenity arriving in um, rural communities, in remote communities, and, and socialising young people, as, as, as these leaders put it, with the trash end of white society's values and what have you. You said this is the problem. They'll only respond to something that the voice tells them, a voice tells them, the voice, I suspect, in the future, mm. if it suits their narrative and their worldview. The problem is their worldview has become the problem. 